Okay, no doubt you've heard that OpenAI has a new image generation model. It's great. Let's start with that. It's great. Go out to ChatGPT and just ask for an image. You need to be on the 4.0 model at this point, and it is slow, and you only get a few generations a day right now if you're on the free model, and it's kind of slowed down if you're on the pay model even. They're working on getting some fixes out. But let me say, everybody is excited about quite a few of the things that you can do, some of the text, that it keeps consistency and coherence very tightly. But I think everybody's missing one major point, and it's the thing that I I believe will change all image models in the future, period. I don't think you can release an image model from now on that's taken seriously without this one thing, and it's a major thing, that OpenAI is doing with this new model. And it's really worth talking about. I'll show you this in action. It's the thing that I think is the most exciting. I don't wanna go talk about it here. Let's dive in and kind of take a look at some things. All right, I start very briefly, just so you're aware where you can pick up more information, down on the OpenAI website. If you look at their introduction to image generation, it is a very good website that shows a bunch of examples of them saying what's very good and how they did it. So they'll give you some examples of the prompts that they did and the output. For example, here's a great representation. I don't even need to show you another one of them saying, here's what to put on the whiteboard, make it as clean as possible. And it looks literally like a photograph at this point. Um, other things that they show, they have these movies down here, highly worth watching the movies. They're a minute and a half each or something like that. And very specific, they're quick, easy, digestible, and give you an idea of, like, this one's about character consistency. The next one's about how to render text and how good it is at that. Um, how to restyle. One of these things that it can do so well is restyling images. So go take a look at the movies that they have here. Those are very simple. They have a section down here for some of the limitations that they're aware of, uh, the different cropping and the hallucinations and the high binding, uh, precise graphing. So there's quite a few things that they're willing to say. These are things that even we are noticing it's struggling with. We're working on it, of course, but at the same time, just be aware of them. And that will give you a lot more understanding on how you might use this model. All right, I'll stop going through this. I do advise coming in here and taking a look at all of the things it can do because it's so digestible and gives you kind of a quick overview of everything that happens in here. I'm going to show you a couple projects that I was working on just for fun and how I went through doing it. But I want to describe to you here before we go into that to tell you what I think is most magical because you're about to see me take these steps. So the thing that is very different about this model compared to everything else that's doing images today is that you're not actually describing the image you want. You're describing what you're interested in seeing. And I know that feels like this weird nuance, but what I'm saying is very, I don't know if you've heard of this thing called vibe coding. I have a lot of videos out here called vibe coding. And vibe coding is just this idea of being able to build applications with natural language. And that's the best way to describe it. And it's a very playful feeling. If you ever to have a chance to do it, I definitely advise giving it a shot, even on some of the easy systems, give it a shot because you'll start feeling like, wait a second, I can create something. I'm not coding, I don't have to worry about or be scared of the technical part. How much do I or don't I know? When will I get lost because I don't know enough? It's much more about can I produce something that's valuable to me or was enjoyable to make and that's the vibe part and that happens here so this is kind of vibe graphics this is the moment that we've shifted from asking for a very specific thing from a model like I need to use this lens have the shadows coming from here you may still do that when you really want that level of specificity. But in reality, for me to get good quality responses from a lot of these image models, I've had to do it anyway. And I don't know photography that well, and I don't know a lot of these systems that well to know, how do I describe this kind of graphic? What's, what's the difference between these type of graphic styles, for example? We don't necessarily have to do that anymore. So for example, you might be able to drop a picture of something and then also drop an image from somewhere else saying, okay, you see this picture and what this image has or the kind of graphical style this image has, use that on this picture. Turn this picture into that graphical style. It might be all you need to say. And that was definitely not doable and at the very least almost impossible to do in most of the image models. That's what's happening. We're now creating vibe graphic. You want to kind of riff with it. You kind of want to start with an object and say, oh, I kind of want to do this. 
and it shows it to you and you go, yeah, okay, that's fine. How about if we do it with that? Or how about taking this away and updating that one spot? And that's really what's happening. And I can't advise enough to kind of go create some images that aren't specific. You're not trying to create a singular image. You're just trying to vibe with it and say, oh, I kind of want an image of a tree. Okay, once you get a tree, kind of, oh, I want a tall tree and I want it to have one ornament hanging from it. Oh, okay, and I want a little the ornament to be broken and a bird living inside of that ornament. You can just start vibing with it that way and end up with something that's very attractive that you didn't start with. And that's not how image models happened to be used before. Let's just dive in and show a couple of the projects that I was working on. They're not necessarily connected to one another narratively, but at the same time, I think it might be fun to see the ways that I'm kind of vibe creating with it. And it really is just as much fun as the vibe coding that I've been doing. And I've been doing a ton of that. Let's dive in and look. Okay, okay, so let's play around with like product objects. It's always kind of fun to mess around with product objects, right? So let's see, uh, let's reimagine maybe, maybe Pepsi. Create a Pepsi can sitting on the hood of a fire engine. Make the image look um, like a professionally shot product photo. Okay, um, that's excellent. Um, let's make the fire engine a bit more real. It looks a little plastic and too kind of rendered. Also, what I really want to do is modernize the design on the can just a bit, but stay true to Pepsi. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so what it did here was uh, kind of capitalize the, the logo. Okay, uh, let's push the design a bit more than that. <laughs> Um, what's going on here? Uh, uh, this is not very different, right? Um, I'm looking for design elements on the can or a creative alter to the logo or some, I don't know, deep creativity here. <laughs> yes, yes, this is what I'm talking about. This is where it starts to happen. So this is like, oh, I have all kinds of ideas. Now we're getting somewhere. Can you create some depth on that? I, I like the flat flame, so keep that. I mean, have the flames in front of the rest of the can, so some shadow or other technique. And maybe play with a faux casting lighting from the flame onto maybe the Pepsi logo or label. Um, maybe the blue is a gradient that darkens the further it is away from the flame. Or do we even want the blue? I'm not really sure. <laughs> oh, yes, that is beautiful. Uh, okay, okay. So this is going so well. I love what you're doing here. Um, let's start leaning into a flavor and have that reflected as some kind of name on the label. Um, I think we want to keep the basic structure that we have going on here. I believe this is really good. If we add a label, let's make sure it's not in the current Pepsi font. I don't know what flavor, so come up with something creative. I'll pretend that we're going to do Pepsi Hot Cherry. So you can put Hot, hot Cherry below Pepsi, maybe a bit rotated in some way, uh, certainly in a different font, maybe piping or, or something similar. I don't want to disrupt too much of the beautiful graphics we have with this fire. The reason I chose Cherry is that it would actually uh, lean to the logo into the flavor we're going for. If it's a cherry, then it's a very small edit we might do to add a cherry stem and maybe a little dimple or something else that barely changes the logo in a brand acceptable way. Give it a shot. Oh, <laughs> I mean, the can is great, but I mean, this is starting to feel like, I don't know, kid thing or something. So, all right, all right. I think the logo is a little too cute. We, want, we don't want it to be that cutesy. The font choice you've given for hot cherry is nice, but it, it might be too big. It really disrupts the very cool flame design we had before. And I believe this dramatically reduces the overall value. Uh, like if there's a way for the flame to still be there and almost like licking Pepsi while hot cherry is overlaid in a creative way, that would be great. However, it doesn't have to be as big uh, and shouldn't be so disruptive. I want to maintain those awesome previous flames we had. Uh, yeah, so I think we've lost something in this. I think we're going backwards a little bit. Again, these flames don't look like the one from a few cans ago. And we darkened the blue and just had the flames in the Pepsi label. Everything has broken since we added the new hot cherry label. I think what it feels like is we're showing a little bit too much clarity around hot cherry. In, in other words, we're leaving a big banner area of blue so that Pepsi can sit on it and hot cherry can sit on it. And, and that feels a little disingenuous. I think what I'd like to feel is go back to that earlier can that we had, which was dark. And the flames had kind of internal two-tone flat graphics to them. And they were not too busy. These flames are lots and lots of edges. So this one's a little bit more chaotic feeling. And we want it to feel a little bit more uh, graphic feeling. Uh, and then inside of the flame somehow, have hot cherry kind of as kind of a screen overlay effect or an embossed effect or hinted at somehow subtly is I think where I would head. Yeah, okay, this is good. I, I mean, I like the, the black can, of course. I mean, that's just interesting. Um, flames came back. They're not quite as nice as that other one. So I think I might go back to that other one. This one's still really cool. I, I would definitely drink this, by the way. Uh, let me go back up to where I think we kind of fell off. So this to me is probably the best version. Uh, but great, I can always take this, put it into another chat, start from here and, and leverage this. So this doesn't go away. At least I have this version. Uh, that was awesome. I, and I really want some Pepsi hot cherry, whatever the heck that is. I want to take this Cheetos bag and take the Chester Cheeto character off and maybe create some kind of penguin character that becomes our Cheeto character. Do you think you can do that? Okay, okay, I'll give him credit for that. That's pretty awesome. Let's see how far we can push this. 
Uh, yeah, that's uh, actually kind of awesome. Thank you. Um, I want him to have just a bit more playfulness. Maybe I like him on the skateboard. That's kind of cool. But maybe give him like a five o'clock shadow and just a little sus would be nice. And also, I kind of want to feel like he's coming out of the packaging, not fully out, kind of like the Cheetos logo itself with the drop shadow first. Let's just start there instead of he's part of the packaging with a drop shadow below. <laughs> okay. All right. Cheetos, I hope you're happy with me. Uh, yeah, this is kind of awesome. Oh, uh, I got here. See, this is how this starts to happen. Oh yeah, so he definitely is gonna have to have a Cheeto hanging out of his mouth like a cigar of some kind, right? We don't want it actually looking like a cigar, but more like a kid that's playing with a cigar. Uh, so definitely that needs to happen. I like this this penguin. I think you've got something going with him. Um, so let's let's get the cigar action going, and then maybe some other graphical element on the let's call it the street orange, the lower section of orange. It feels just a bit too toned that all we now seemingly have is this bright orange at the top and the darker orange at the bottom. Give me some kind of texturing or treatment uh, on the bottom orange. I think that's probably the best place for it. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's. Okay, this is good. So how about it not coming straight out of his face because it makes it look like he's playing the bugle. So something off to the side, something rakish would be nice. Uh, maybe a tiny hint at a tattoo of some kind on his wing or uh, on his chest or something, but it needs to be kind of subtle. And then I kind of want on this lower orange, I see you put a nice little um, splattering down there. That treatment is actually quite nice, but a, a bit too subtle. Let's get a little bit street vibe down there. Have no idea. <laughs> yeah. You know, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, tattoos in both places and the splatter. That's great. I don't know. <laughs> He's gorging, maybe? I'm not really sure. So this is kind of awesome. This is the idea. Let's see if we can really push it. What do you think? Okay, this is getting brilliant. This is great. Here's what I want. I want the bird in mid-escape from the packaging. So I want his body and feet and skateboard to still be stuck to the packaging in 2D and his head and some of his wings tearing himself away in 3D coming out toward the viewer. Sure. <laughs> okay, this is getting good. Okay, but even more 3D, almost photorealistic with the top of the bird. So we still want it to feel a little graphic, but a heavy cast of shadow back on the packaging so that we really feel the separation and really some peel point where it's going from 3D to 2D so that we can really tell that the body is still absolutely stuck on the packaging. And we don't really need him bursting out of the package. It's fine to have the package tears in there, uh, but as much as anything, it's really the character coming to life and moving away from the packaging itself, not something that we would print as packaging. Oh, no. Uh, okay, so I got beat on... Uh wasn't able to generate the image because it requests, uh, the request violates our content policy. Something small in the concept that triggered it, but no worries, if you want, we can rework the idea just a bit. Um, want to give me a new vision or prompt, explore it a little bit different. Okay, let's see if I can come up with a different way of doing that. Okay, this image is really good. Um, I want to get back to the splatter on the street, kind of go street vibe with the streets, make sure that that feels uh, messy in some kind of way. Cheeto's not really in his mouth anymore, which that's going to have to happen. But when he pops out of the packaging, I want his top half to become much more photorealistic to some degree. It doesn't need to be an actual penguin. I still want this graphical penguin, but I want it to suddenly start having texturing and feel some to him, not just a couple new shadow lines and, and highlights. So I want what's left behind or what has not separated from the packaging to still feel graphical, but what's separating to feel like it's actually removed from the packaging. I'm not trying to print this. I'm trying to uh, represent kind of a, a graphic moment where the character comes to life and jumps off of the packaging page. Maybe that'll be better. All right, what did we get? Oh, no. Uh, I mean, okay. Oh, uh, wait, 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 wait. Let's back up a step. This, you did good. You did good. It definitely is feeling a little bit, he's still characterish and uh, kind of photorealistic at the same time, but I think we went a bit too photorealistic. So let's go back to graphical and make him volumetric at the higher point and flat at the bottom point. So he's still his graphical version. That, that version is still the best version of him. Let's make him kind of have a volume at the top so that you can tell he's starting to poke out uh, and, and make his arms pushing him out of the pack. I mean, I don't think he has arms. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty much going to stop there. We've done just about everything we can do. The cigar looks a lot better. That looks almost photorealistic again. We're now getting, it looks like a carrot. That's okay. Um, but let's, let's see. What was, what was the favorite? Uh, that one was pretty good. Short of the fact that he's got two tattoos, he's got two of everything. Um, very symmetrical bird. So this one is the winner, but this is fun. So this was kind of that, you know, vibe creation of, of graphics. So excellent. Okay, so that was excellent. I love this. This is, again, very much like vibe coding. The way I've described vibe coding multiple times to people is it's like your first box of crayons. Don't think of it in a way that you're supposed to go and ask for the perfect application and hope that it comes back. Just go play and say, I don't know, I want penguins that are flopping around on the ocean. And it creates that and you go, okay, I don't want that. Let me create a tic-tac-toe game. 
And that just becomes kind of what you do with crayons. If you remember really early days or when you're just, just noodling around and you pick up something fun like a pencil or a crayon and you're just kind of messing around, that's what vibe coding feels like. And now this vibe graphic system really starts to feel that same way that I can kind of go, oh, show me this sky as if it was purple. Okay, put a UFO up there. Okay, have like some alien parachuting out of the UFO. Uh, uh, put some flames on the back of the UFO as if it was going down, uh, you know, and just kind of vibe along with it until you get something that you feel like, well, that's, that's kind of cool. So I think that's where this is going. I think all image models in the future will absolutely need this kind of real world, real language referencing to be able to talk about specific parts of the image or emotions of the image or the directions that you might want to take it rather than needing to say very specific phrases to get what you want out of these models. I think it's exciting. I'm super excited for where this takes us. And this is kind of OpenAI's chat GPT three or four really for a lot of people moment for image. I think images just got chat GPT'd and we're about to see this blow up across a whole bunch of different products. Thanks for coming along on the ride on this one and I'll see you in the next one.